All right. I'm so happy I got my mic to work. So you can, uh, it's bearable. You don't have to listen to all this noise that was coming from my computer. Um, I had it plugged in on the front of the computer for some reason. It was just, I couldn't get rid of this uh, so loud. The noise was so bad, I couldn't reduce it in Premiere either. So anyways, plugged it into the back of the computer and it's much better. Yeah, so would go through the process and um, just a disclaimer, because I don't, I've been working in Photoshop for a long time, but I'm, I don't have the most efficient way of working. Uh, it's kind of all over the place and I guess I like that because um, it's experimental and I can back I, I don't merge my layers and it gets kind of messy in my layer menu uh, but I can turn layers off see if it's helping the painting and then it comes a time where it's just unmanageable and I'll merge everything um, I just I kind of, I'm so focused on the painting that I, <laughs> it don't really work on the layers so well. But uh, but I would, yeah, maybe take, um, when you watch this, maybe learn from the way I sketch or manage colors rather than my workflow in Photoshop. So uh, my friend Victor Shogil is an um, artist friend of mine, a good friend that's uh, joining for this process video, and he hasn't viewed the video yet, so I thought he'd have some good questions um, that hopefully I can answer for you and uh, uh, for you guys and, and him. Um, probably some different questions uh, rather than me trying to guess what you guys would like to ask. Uh, and uh, yeah, introducing Victor. And then I'll, yeah, we're, all, we're all rolling. <laughs> Dude, this is the first podcast ever. I'm so excited. All right. Okay, but it's not a podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's more of a for Imagine FX. Yeah, exactly. Listening. So I'm doing it's like a, a tutorial. Yeah, right? a process video. I'll just explain that I'm a little messy with my layers, but uh, I paint sort of, um, and I merge my layers together. I paint usually on one layer, mm -hmm. but on this portrait, I use a lot of these uh, layer modes, common layer modes, and I experiment a lot. So sometimes I make a bunch of layers, I'll paint separately on them, and then I'll get rid of layers, or I'll just merge them flat. But yeah. <clears throat> okay, so every time you do a painting, your layers change. Is that what you're saying? You don't have a formula with layers? Not really a formula with layers, but maybe a formula with how I paint. Um, starting with a sketch, like a grayscale sketch. Which and is then, what I'm seeing on the right. Yeah, so that's on the right. And then I've got sort of the finished product on the left. Okay. Um, and I think the goal of this tutorial was to do something painterly with very expressive strokes that mm -hmm. was kind of the key thing I'm going to uh, hopefully explain but it kind of comes naturally through the painting as it goes uh, yeah wow firstly um as a fellow nerd of drawing and painting it's absolutely incredible to see digital works like that get the painterly effect I'm more finding that um I don't know, for whatever reason, the brushes that I'm using, it, it, things are looking digital, which I don't mind, I like it looking digital, but that painterly effect that you're getting, um, I know like, lots of people know how to do it, but I find it a mystery, Yeah, cool. and it's so cool. Yeah, it's a lot of, uh, like, you should play with the mixer brush a little bit, with this soft, very wet settings, it's, good. it's a good, good brush, so I guess it gives you that sort of, um... Like it's wet and wet. Yeah, exactly. Like a real painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you are classically trained. Yeah. Arch, so correct. Perfect. Um, yeah. So I classically trained. I went to the uh, Swedish Academy of Realist Art um, for two years, and we start off by, as you see, I draw quite angular with straight lines. This uh, in this stage, um, uh, can you kind of simplify your your edges rather than um, get fiddly with curves? So I draw quite straight with straight lines, angular, and I'm just looking for proportions at the moment. For making think sure, like her eye level, uh, both her eyes are on the right level. Mm -hmm. Same with the nose and the distance between the nose and the eyes, and then where the corners and the mouth are. And the general shape of and the you, head. And you do highlight areas and move, use the move tool rather than redrawing sometimes? Sometimes, yeah. So I'll, yep, I'll grab um, 
a selection and I'll move things around if the proportion is looking off, just faster than erasing and then drawing over again. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes I have a, like a moment in my heart where I'm wondering if that's yeah, maybe fair it's cheating. or che it, yeah. is that a thing? I mean, I feel like depends. in the digital age, cheating is like now a thing of the past. Yeah, I guess so. But if also if you want to uh, train your eye, maybe it's it's worth redoing. True. So that you you start to nail it more often mm. and more practice rather than just bumping things around. Okay, but with yeah. workflows and time and life nowadays, sometimes it's just incredible to use the technology yeah. that you got. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so I'm just looking at shapes at the moment, kind of, kind of simplifying the shape of the head. It's almost like a vertical line at the back of her head going down, but it looks kind of cool. Um, uh, we did these Barg drawings at the school. It's the first thing you start off with. They're called Charles Barg, uh, is the artist. They're, Barg they're, drawings? Yeah, they're... Uh, master copies, mm -hmm. or we do copies from uh, Barg plates mm -hmm. um, to start off with at the atelier and um, we were taught to kind of replicate them over two or three weeks, sometimes it would take up longer depending on the detail, it, the, each Barg, there's, so, there's simple ones we start off with, and then there's more complex ones. But they would encourage you to work over and two, three weeks on a copy? Yeah, so they, we, we would try to really get, so you couldn't almost, to the point where you couldn't tell which was the drawing, and then the, which is the plate. Look look him up, it's Charles Barg. Barg, um, okay. Yeah, he would, there's a lot of uh, very structural, structured figure drawings, as well as um, portraits and profiles of faces. And I love looking at, I'm sure I love it because I love, uh, you know, Bern Hogarth? Yeah. Same, I don't know if it's similar, but I love looking at academic drawers yeah. work and yeah. the, the process and the way that they break things down yeah. and the, like, the rigorous. I'm noticing that you're flipping yeah. the canvas. Mm -hmm. that, that, would, that would seem like that's a very classical technique to, yeah, to like, check your composition. Yeah, I guess we, at school, we used to take the paintings and we would check them in the mirror. In the mirror, right. Yeah. So I flip the canvas heaps. It just refreshes your eye. Uh, you can see if things are incorrect, or right. uh, yeah, helps you see if things are incorrect. I have that bound to a key as well, so you can have it bound to whatever. I think mine's to control Alt Q, flips uh -huh. my canvas horizontally, and I flip a lot, so it might get a little bit annoying to watch. But um, I suppose no, that's interesting. You're watching your eye, as you already said. You're not uh, like you're not calling it a tutorial. You're calling it a process video. So yeah. I guess it's like if you zoom out and look at the process, it's yeah. like oh, okay, I kind of see how your brain's working. Yeah. Interesting. I'm uh, the moment started adding a few uh, values to yeah. the drawing because yes. I, I think it's hard. Do you find it hard to see? proportions with lines sometimes I feel like if I block in these values like I'm doing with the hair and I frame the face I can see how the face is really looking yeah like thinking in larger sense. shapes yeah. gives you I mean like with a line you just have to with a line you have to okay you've got the outline and you can imagine it filled with mm. a shape but mm -hmm. imagining and seeing are two different things and then when you really see it yeah it does highlight it yeah especially the shape of the face yeah um, just makes it work in a thumbnail uh, sort of size. Yeah, on the top right hand corner of my screen, I've got the navigator open, uh, which you can open in like the windows and open navigator. You have a little thumbnail, so it starts to read a little better when you put the values down. Um, yeah, so. This size that I'm looking at, are you working at this zoom, this level of zoom? What is it? Yeah, I zoom... Six, nine? What does that say? What's the percentage? It's, it's, I guess the canvas size is really large. Like, the overall image size is huge. But, uh -huh. um, just so the quality is high. But I say, quite, would you say that's quite zoomed out? Compared to how I'm working okay. lately? Yeah. You're working in 300 dpi? Yeah. Okay. And what's what's your canvas size? Oh, I think it was... I'm actually not sure at this stage. It's got, it changes. I think I started a little bit too big. Okay, and you got... Yeah. Yeah. I stay quite zoomed out for most of it. Maybe if I start working on the eyes and the details of the eyes, uh, I'll yeah, zoom in into certain areas a little bit later on. So are you having sort of, does this start to get more fun as you've blocked in detail? I feel like the hard work, it looks like you did at the beginning. Yeah, I feel quite confident. Actually, after the sketch went pretty smoothly. Um, 
So I start to have a lot of fun with the colors. Um, once I've got the sketch down, it's nice because you can use Photoshop and it's layer modes to really experiment with colors. We'll go through that soon. Um, but yeah, I do get so the values, some of the values down, everything's kind of similar in value. It's almost like it's a single value sketch, but um, there's a few dark accents here and there to, to uh, yeah, make, maybe make the facial, facial features pop a little bit more. So I know where the focal point is, you know, keeping the darks under the eyelids and the nose and the jaw. And then keeping the face quite bright and then fading the neck off so it looks like it has uh, there's this nice gradient of light going through it. Mm. Yeah. I'll add even a, a, another gradient quite soon. So, so classical, dude. You're yeah. so, I, I find it so satisfying. <laughs> yeah, it's fun to watch this bed off as yeah, well. It's, yeah, it's really satisfying. Okay, okay, you're going for Yeah, so I, I kind of dim you know? everything down so I can make those lights pop again. So that was I, satisfying. I erased, yeah, erased some of the lights in the face. I found that um, really satisfying, just a bit. Yeah. And I try to save my brightest bright, so like the whites, I try to save it for later for speculus. It's hard, tough to do because it's nice to add the speculus, like the little points. What do you call it? Speculus? It's a speculus, so it's a little point of like the brightest light. Maybe sometimes it's in the eyeball, like the, the specular light. Tip of the nose? Or the tip of the nose, I like to put it, I like putting it there. Mm -hmm. um, try to save it for later, but I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Keeping those, keeping that range sort of limited, so not using too many uh, full blacks uh, only for where the darkest points are like I wouldn't make all the hair dark because then you don't have this nice uh, range of value that you can explain the shapes of the hair and the form of the hair in. sure so, I don't know if that makes but, sense but well you're, I think you're saving the highest contrast yeah. for where you want to leave the up Yes, correct. Yeah, that or yeah, definitely. That's it. But and so like the hair, okay. You, there's a range of values, but it's a limited range. Yeah. You're being disciplined with, okay, the hair. You want the largest shapes. This, yeah. this is this is how I think, is that, you want, the five or four or five largest shapes, to be, within a certain range, and then within that range, there's, there's room for five more ranges like let's say the hair has a certain the hair has a certain dominant darkness mm -hmm. in this piece mm -hmm. right and yeah. within the hair there's a lot of range but overall on average the hair maintains its value structure yeah so as to shape the yeah the face that's that's kind of what i see you doing there but exactly. it's like there's a discipline mm -hmm. this is something i find super difficult is yeah. that that discipline to do all the structural work in the beginning so that you can have the freedom to like augment values over time mm -hmm. in the different areas, mm -hmm. but uh, it's amazing how you do it without getting too carried away. Because sometimes I get lost in detail. Oh uh, yeah, I think um, I think I do in certain stages, but uh, this one went smoothly. Like uh, yeah, I was really happy with that sketch. At the moment, I'm just we wanted some markings on her face, um, just to give us some. Uh, something interesting going on. Yeah, what's so the deal with that? Just really scroll, that's like scroll. that seems like really some. Um, what's that video game you said you used to play? Uh, World of Warcraft. Yeah, sort of World of Warcraft. It's kind of got yeah, a World yeah, of Warcraft yeah, yeah. vibe. Yep. Probably inspired by that. Uh, wow, classic just came out. So I'm not playing it. I'm held up. But <laughs> I love, I love, I love, I love listening to you and Ollie was. T oh. Ollie amazing? was saying the other day about playing League of Legends. Oh, yeah, okay. And, no, I haven't played that. Yeah. And, like, in it's the best crazy. way possible, I'm just like, man, you guys are nerds. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm a nerd too, but I never got into it. I never got into video games like that. But, like, part of me is a little jealous. Oh, man, wow, 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 it was so fun. It's so fun. Um, but, yeah, a lot of time. Now I try to save that time for drawing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already spending so much time on the computer. Yeah, how do you how do you feel about that? Yeah, I don't know. The it's amount of time you're gonna spend in front of the computer. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, yeah. I mean, I'm very active when I'm off the computer. I like to go climb. I like to go to the gym. So, ah, right, we jumped a few steps here. Boom. I've actually forgot to record some of the process between um, the sketch and then doing these color color sketches. But uh, oh, you're I, keeping the mystery alive. 
No, I will go through them. <laughs> okay, I, I actually <laughs> scrap. I scrap this version and I do a different version. So you can kind of just watch. Yeah, I'll do. Uh, yeah, we'll go through it again. Okay. Have, so yeah. s- seeing as we're at color, mm-hmm. what do you think about? Like, do you feel color, or do you have like kind of like a formulaic? Yeah. So I feel. I I think I feel the color. Uh, I know that we wanted something that was. Uh, there was a lot of red in the image, uh, a lot of warm colors. She's meant to have this inviting feel, like warm and inviting feel. Uh, it's a front cover magazine, so I guess that's what you you want for you know to bring in the the buyer or the, the viewer of the magazine, something that looks uh, <laughs> inviting yeah. to read. I was um, gonna say, congrats. By the way. Um, yeah, it's sick. Yeah, so I kind of feel the color, but I, I so I'll restart this. And then I didn't record the process, but I can show you the layer. So Whoa, what just happened there? How are you doing this? Yeah, these are all layer modes. Do you know about layer modes? No, okay. I don't. So over in your layers column, um, when you make a new layer, at the top next to the opacity, is uh, you can see it says normal, now it says hard light. Um, heat and then saturation, these are all layer modes. Um, and I play through, you can see I'm just experimenting. I'm just wow. cycle through them. Okay. Now I'm clipping her out from the background, sort of trying to get interesting colors going on. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. This is so far, I'm finding this the most interesting thing. I have no idea what you're doing. So now that's a normal layer set up. Mm hmm. Separate. Mm hmm. Meaning? Um, what, what are the different types of layers that you can choose from? There's uh, the ones that I use the most are uh, Color Dodge. Do you know Color Dodge? No. Okay, and then uh, uh, overlay, and they have certain effects. Uh, the layers work in a certain way. Um, color dodge usually brightens and saturates uh, an image, so you can really pop your lights using it. They generally use like a soft brush. Um, yeah, I'll explain when I start to use one. Overlay. Um, yeah, it's it's hard. Like, uh, I don't Is that where you can replace a specific color? Let's see. I'm gonna... Okay, so I use an overlay layer mode, and I give her skin an overall skin tone. It's kind of warm brown. And I use a color dodge uh, towards a, you know her forehead with an orange to kind of pop the forehead and cheeks and the ear where there's that subsurface scattering, which is when kind of see the blood through the surface of the skin and kind of warm up the cheeks and the ear a little bit um, as light goes through. Um, yeah, and just to bring the focal point again to the, the face. So I use a color dodge that area. Now I start to put in some cast shadows under the sort of the eyebrows and the eye sockets and the nose. You can see the cast shadow on the right hand side of her nose and underneath the bottom lip. Um, it's where I start painting with opaque paint, so I'm now using a brush. I'm actually painting rather than just using soft brushes and throwing colours over the top using these layer modes. Now I'm starting to paint with opaques. I'm picking colours off my colour palette um, and sculpting the face. So this is where you go full blown painter mode? Yeah, exactly. You're no longer um, moving it? No. Here's the initial sketch on the left hand side. That's what kind of the mock up we had. Oh, I um, like that. Just a loose mock-up, and now, now I'm back to uh, going from, uh, yeah, so it's the same sort of pose and the hair flow, and where the eye gets led around the painting. Um, but uh, we do want more red in the background, so I do end up changing the background a lot. Um, I do a few color mock-ups. Uh, one that's more pink, one that's more red, and then this one that's more blue. Maybe more of a realistic sort of color palette. Um, not as saturated as the the other ones. Yeah. Putting in some accents here and there, so there's some some darks on the side of the flares, the nose, um, another eyelids. It's really starting to paint details. Yeah. Okay, because. I'm fascinated by Scandinavian artistic tradition. Like, I don't, I don't know if it's true, but I get a feeling that there's like a certain unique vibe coming out of Scandinavia. Yeah, I wonder, I mean, I went to 
there's a, there's a I went to the Swedish Academy of Real Estate, which is a great school. Firstly, we should preface you are Swedish, correct? I'm half Swedish. So my mother's Swedish. Oh. Uh, half. Half American, because my dad's American. But I was born here in Australia. So okay. It's a bit of a mix. But I lived in Sweden for seven years. Okay. Nice. And uh, I worked at a climbing gym because that was fun. And uh, while at the climbing gym, I didn't have this creative outlet um, that I used to have. I was, when I was 18, after school, I studied graphic design for a year and we did a drawing course and what? I loved drawing. Where did you do that? I did that in Sydney, in the rocks. Julian Ashton? No, not Julian Ashton. It was just under that school. So Julian Ashton is Sydney. It's a it's an atelier here in Sydney. That's like the fine the yeah, fine art place. It's the fine art place. What I didn't know doing? about that place, but I I went to the graphic design school in the same building. Are you it serious? Was, it was uh, yeah, exactly. And What's it called? It's C A T C. Still exists. It still exists. It's in a different location. No way. I did uh, a year there, but we had a drawing course to begin with. It was a great teacher, um, and I was super inspired. And I drew a lot after that. And then I kind of stopped. You know, I got into cars or, I don't know. I, yeah. Started doing other things, playing video games or... This is when you're in Australia still? Still in Australia. 18. 18. So about... From 19 to 20... Maybe till I was about... From 19 to 22, I wasn't drawing. 22, I started getting back into it. Mm -hmm. I was browsing conceptart.org again. Uh, it was getting a little bit old and dated at the time. But uh, I did find through that forum the school, uh, Swedish Academy of Realist Art okay. in Stockholm. And mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this is amazing. This is only 20 minutes away. And it's what people recommend to do to get your foundations going. Oh, wait. Um, so, wait, you skipped, you skipped, you're in Sweden now? Yeah, I'm in Sweden now. Yeah. Okay. So, I was in Sweden. So, you were in, in Sydney at, yeah. that, at that academy? Yeah. Sorry, not academy, whatever, the design school. Yeah. And now you're in Sweden. Yes, and now exactly. I'm in Sweden. Uh, just for uh, adventure. Just, just for adventure. You yeah. had a passport, right? I had a passport. And that's why I was working at the climbing gym for a while. Yeah. Uh, that's what I was mainly doing. Um, that's the first job you found. Yeah. Okay. And then studying was something that kind of came up later, and I found that school, um, and I did a night course just for a few months mm. and I really liked it. This is, yeah, I think it was one day, one night a week for eight weeks or something, mm -hmm. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. And uh, I realized that was the place I wanted to go. And it's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, these fog plates that I explained earlier. You started off with drawing from a 2D plate. Um, it's basically copying a drawing in 2D and then you progress and you copy something like a statue, we call them a cast. It's like a white uh, gyps cast. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 so it's a, it's a uniform, English. it's colored, it's got a uniform color and it's a neutral color. It's a neutral so color. So that the light just, yeah. gradates on it like clearly. Yeah. And you study and the different, different forms of You don't have to worry about color so much, you just right. worry about the values. Correct, um, right, okay. And, and different like reflected light or, yeah. or uh, what's it called? The, the, the bounce lights. Or like the, the cast shadow. Cast shadows, okay. yeah. Okay. Exactly. You're learning about lighting setup. Yeah. And at the same time, we would do model drawing. So croquis or light drawing, where you draw someone standing modeling. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a daily thing that we did. Yeah. Um, in the night course, uh, you just did the casts? In the night course, it was just bog plates. Because yeah. they, I guess the bog plates are the least interesting. And it kind of like builds your patience. So yeah. the night course was good, good sort of, uh, kind of understood what you were getting, in, getting yourself into. That's the foundation? <laughs> Mm, maybe not the foundation, but the, the, the well, part of the foundation is it trains your eye to okay. really understand that uh, what kind of level of uh, finish you're trying to have. Okay. Um, and there was, you could spend, yeah, as I said, it could be spending two weeks on a very simple drawing, but it should look kind of exactly the same at okay. the end um, wow. in terms of value and drawing. And we would erase on the paper. Um, to the point where some people were sanding back areas of paper so they could get their lines, their ghost lines to go away. How or, thick is this paper? Uh, even, well, and it was quite thick and durable paper as well. Right, so, okay. Yeah. 
some people would go the extreme of like uh, if they'd sanded back a hole in the paper, they would put a piece of paper underneath and sand it back so it would uh, it would sort of blend out. Holy shit! But I uh, never really to that. Yeah, never got uh, very rarely did it come to that point. But, okay. Um, but it's like rigorous. Yeah, it was. You're quite trying rigorous. to make it look yeah. perfect. Yeah. Kind of thing, as in accurate. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Um, and was there was it like competitive? Who can get the most accurate? Maybe, uh, no, maybe not competitive, but people were working through, some people were faster than others. It wasn't so competitive though, because some people worked fast and had a good level of finish, um, but then they would struggle on other things, so everyone was kind of at their own. Okay. If, you, if you went, it was almost uh, interesting to take very long on a project and they get that real mm. nice finish and detail mm. and mm. get your values perfect. Um, yeah. Was it all sort of guys like you, like young People? No, it was it varied as well. I think he's some, one of the youngest was seventeen, but he had an exception. Usually, he had to be eighteen because of life drawing. Because mm. um, um, naked people. Yeah, because of naked people. Um, and uh, we had older. I think we had a student there that was in his uh, early fifties as well. So, and it was really fun. Everyone interacted very well together. It was a very. It's only 30, 32 or thirty three students at the time. Um, yeah. Sick. So you'd be climbing in the day and go to this place at night? Yes, but then uh, when I started actually studying there, it was a daytime, full-time course. And then Sick. I'd climb in the night or work in the night. And then, yeah, study during the day. Did you decide during those courses, you were like, yeah, I'm going to do it? Yeah, this is when I decided that art was the thing I wanted to do, and concept art. And and it, I guess, you know, this... this uh, a lot of things can be self-taught now, so it's not like I'm saying you have to go to a school like this. I would recommend doing life drawing once a week. Go to your gesture drawing, do life drawing once a week. That's mm. all you, you know, and then there's a lot of amazing courses uh, if you want to be a concept artist or illustrator. You, I see people doing uh, much more amazing work um, that have never, you know, they're self-taught. It just depends how devoted you are and how smart you are about studying. And, it does seem like life yeah. drawing is the most accessible way. And there's life drawing everywhere now. Yeah, exactly. But life drawing is, because it's really mm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Exact same thing as you. I was going to design school. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I dropped out, got a job while I tried to figure out what I wanted to do. Yeah. And then I did these night courses yeah. at the local, the National Art School. Ah, yeah. Which is like okay. the, yeah, yeah. the beside <laughs> Julian Ashton is like the really technical, technical atelier school. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have Kofa, which is more kind of going towards modern design mm -hmm. and that's was like somewhere in the middle mm -hmm. you know that focus on art but it was a lot of contemporary art and theory focus um, but strong life drawing base and so I after a couple of weeks doing this night course I was like yeah I want to do the degree course uh, the bachelor or whatever and I started it the next year and we would do one day out of five, I'd go five days a week, and one of the days was life drawing. Mm -hmm. And after about six months, I thought, man, there's only one day of school that I love. Yeah. It's life drawing day. Yeah. Okay. So I was like, I'm gonna drop out, yeah. and I'm just gonna do life drawing five days a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was how I got drawing, mm -hmm. uh, my drawing got way better. Yeah. When I left so, us, so okay. because I just went to, I just did observational drawing yeah. all the time. There's good uh, life drawing on YouTube as well. So I noticed you, you're very good and you're quite devoted at drawing. You have your sketchbook always with you. Always. You're just drawing. Yeah. When we go to the climbing center and we're climbing together, you're drawing people. When we're taking a break, you're drawing anything. Just, always. Just sketching, which is a really good habit. I used to do it. I thought I'd explain just um, what I've been doing for the last 10 minutes or so in the painting. And uh, at the moment, uh, I have sort of a sketch established and now uh, I've started throwing colors on the sketch and I'm making different versions. So I make one pretty uh, detailed version. And then when I get to a point where um, the, there's a character there and it's more than just a sketch, I will take the colors um, image and do different versions of it. So I'll save them in, di in different files. This is probably what I'm doing now. Saving different files, making different versions. One that's got kind of clouds and this uh, pinkish, bluish sort of palette to it with a warm skin tone. And uh, one that's more of a realistic skin tone with a blue background. Um, and I use, as you can see on 
right hand side under my layers I'm using a lot of color balance uh, which is an adjustment layer right there as you can see I'm adjusting the slider um, and now I'm using the masked layer to mask out the body using uh, a black on the white and that means that you can make a selection in that layer and um, just alter the color of the background instead of the character as well. Uh, it's just quick, so now I've got a red background. And I think this is something that's more uh, leaning towards what we wanted from the beginning. Um, this one gets chosen, and I send in all my color mockups and progress, uh, yeah, start to render in detail this one. Yes, my question, my question is, <clears throat> okay, I've been drawing for a while, but I still feel like a pretty massive rookie sometimes. When you really, when I really try hard, I'm happy with how I'm going, but some days it's like, it's like I've never drawn at all, you know? I don't know if it, you ever get that. Mm -hmm. um, some days are better than others. Mm -hmm. But with your work and how realistic it is, Sometimes the illusion of form that you're able to get, I feel like there's like a magic trick to it. And, and this is saying that like, I don't know, somebody learning to draw might uh, get caught up in that, I don't know what your opinion on it is, but like, I don't know, I guess it, seeing as you can do it, and you know that it's not necessarily magical, it's like hard work and understanding of simple principles. Like, what do you say to somebody who has been drawing a while and just can't quite seem to like crack that? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and it's not always a smooth process when I'm painting these, especially this portrait. I'm um, this, okay, so I've recorded about, it's about 13 or 14 hours of of recorded painting time and then a lot of those hours were correcting mistakes uh, but I think in this one the reason why I went smoothly is I really focused and got the sketch correct I felt quite confident that at least a sketch is good I can always go back to that um, sometimes the sketch doesn't come out well and I still push through and I do I do close a lot of canvases restart uh, Maybe not as much these days because I'm more confident that if I use the right reference or if I pick at it long enough, it'll start looking correct. Or if I get one area right, like maybe the eye starts looking nice. I get this, uh, this feeling that uh, maybe I can kind of push, push the piece. I get a little bit of that, what's it called? Yeah, that reward, so. Inspiration? Yeah, just. Uh, Motivation? Yeah. I think the motivation pushed through. Right, when you see like the potential, it's like, yeah. oh, that bit looks good. That what if I brought yeah. it all to that level? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, n no, not everything goes so smoothly. Um, just think about, uh, yeah, think about pulling up the right references um, and then pushing through, uh, understanding why your mistakes or why it's looking wrong. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of advice there. Have you done much reading, or do you just use your eye? If you know what I mean, like do in you techni in, in technique like reading te technical mm -hmm. things, but mm -hmm. not not so much. I look I look at uh, the Gurney Journey, his book. Oh, James Gurney. James Gurney. Yeah. Uh, and I look at Proko. James Gurney's book. Uh, yeah, and then there's imaginative like, realism. Yeah. Uh, was a book a that books. I read. Really good for concept art. I look at a lot of art, and I think looking at a lot of art, you can kind of you understand. Um, I do a lot of master copies as well. Mm -hmm. I used to do more. Um, and I think that's also helpful. You kind of can analyze um, their techniques. People say people say you absorb the 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 kind of like the intuition yeah. of that artist. Yeah. When you copy yeah. their their mm -hmm. um, compositions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which makes sense. Yeah. I think because my perspective on the question because I it's a little disingenuous because I have an answer to the question which is like if things are looking wrong it's because they look wrong mm. 
Like, you use your eye. Mm-hmm. There is no magic trick. Yeah. It's like... No, sure. How do you get all the things in the right place? It's like painstaking measurement. That's how. Yeah. And after time, at the beginning, it's painstaking, like yeah. you're saying with these... What do you call the... Yeah, bog plates. Bog so plates. It's about building so, the patience. So I, could ima- I can imagine the bog plates in the beginning would be super frustrating. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. not easy to get yeah. right. Sometimes I even felt like the teacher was just telling you something was wrong, just just so you'd erase it and do it again. Right. If it was correct. Purely for the discipline yeah, just, of like, just to, to not be uh, yeah. like, what's the word? Um, attached to something that mm, that's might not be right. Attached. And don't be attached, especially because you're doing digital work. You can use use the cheats if you need to cut, clip out things moving around. If mm. you need to, uh, I think, um, yeah, to an extent, um, it's. It's the, those tools are there for a reason. If it's gonna, just don't get too attached to your painting. One of my favorite digital painters, and probably favorite digital painters of a lot of people now, mm-hmm. Alberto Mielga. Oh yeah, his work is awesome. He says, uh, being a digital painter, painting digitally yeah. makes you an adventurous painter. Yeah. Because I can just command Z that. Yeah. You know, Control yeah. Z, whatever. Exactly. And uh, <clears throat> I thought about it. I thought, wow, that's. That's an interesting way of looking at it. Mm-hmm. I originally, painting like you on canvas, mm-hmm. thought uh, it's kind of like, uh, it makes, it can kind of cheapen the value of everything you, because on a real painting you're like, I can't really go back, so your decision, you really think about it. Mm-hmm. But if you still have that kind of like attention to detail with making your digital work, but you have the ability to go back, it's actually, it does make you advent. You can just try things. Yeah. Which is in- the incredible thing about digital yeah. painting. Yeah. 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 So so nice. So that's what I'll do here, and that's why you know I made that that color mock up in the beginning, and now it's completely different. Um, something was frustrating me that night with the shoulder, mm. um, and I I start to swap it up pretty soon. Mm. Uh, I think I go away from because I think she's now. a little what more front on in your final thing. Yeah, she is, and she's got the because lace sleeve. She seems a little bit now. She's kind of does. She doesn't look as inviting in this post she's, she's quite turned away from turned you. away from the yeah viewer. um and luckily because a change this late is a little bit risky because you kind of have to redraw the redraw the, the gesture um and luckily they, they were happy with the change but you're um, gonna do it anyway so we'll see i think i went away from the computer now because i was probably so frustrated but i, I came back and i'm like ah oh, just see if i can work it out okay um, are you redrawing right now is that, is that what's no happening? i'm just trying to add the anatomy trying to get <laughs> yeah. I can hear it in your voice. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was struggling here. Yeah. It's, it's super important to know that if you're not struggling, then it's probably you're not doing it right. Like every single time you do a new piece, like halfway through, or usually like a quarter of the way in, a third of the way in for me, mm-hmm. I'm like, this is an absolute travesty. Yes, yeah. it's terrible. It's never yeah. gonna work. Yeah, I, I was. I mean, I was happy with the face, so. Uh, and then I had the good sketch, so I had some things down. I wasn't too, I wasn't in a panic mode, mm-hmm. but yeah. Problem solving it. Yeah, it was more like problem. I knew it was gonna work somehow. Yeah. Which is good, cause, but there are some step times when I get to this point and then I just don't feel like the piece is working. And of course that happens. It does happen, it yeah. Happens, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying to, that's a, yeah. Just I now I go back to the face comfort zone, kind of just rendering rendering areas of the face, just because I have some time. And it, I it's take, yeah, yeah, it's like when you go back to a blue, right. a blue or a yellow. Yes. So here I resketched the shoulder just because I, I redid the, the sketch just because I forgot to record that. that okay, section. nice. But you're being so you brave. See, you're just like yeah, yeah, let's go for it. And so you can see how I do it. Uh, oh, I yeah. like this. Yeah, cool. Just so you can understand. Um, so like sometimes I come back to the computer, I stop the recording, and I put it back on, and then. Uh, I mean, I'd start painting and I've forgotten to put, put the, like, start the recorder again, so. But here I resketch it for you. Is this all in one night? You've just gone for it? Yeah, this is all in one night. And then I'm trying to understand the gesture of the hair and how it comes around the shoulders. And now it's time to put in uh, Oh, this is great. Lace, this lace, is great, lace. man. Thank you. Wow, that really, you're right, it did need a change. Yeah, I think it looks much better. Yeah, uh, and really then it good. works good with the layout of the cover as well. I'll throw that over the top soon. Um, but we we wanted, uh, and, and the reason why I drew and painted the whole anatomy of the shoulders just so I could understand how the her top, her blouse would sort of fall over the shoulders. Yeah, well, when you're trying to explain clothes, it's yeah. in terms of the body, right? Yeah. 
always the, yeah. the clothes are going to follow the contour of the body yeah so I felt like it was helpful to just draw draw the whole thing out yeah I get that <clears throat> and of course I use reference um, doing these things I use multiple references on this one so you know I use different references for the shape of the face um, the colors the values different references for um, yeah color palette uh, and then of course I kind of I close down references and just kind of render how I want to just so it becomes more personal because I well you, you need a starting off point I feel yeah and you don't create in a vacuum no exactly. or else you just sort of like make the same thing again again yeah oh damn there's another sketch oh okay cool oh this is fun now it's getting really real yeah just I, I put it over the top just like I don't know if it was going to just work. mocking it up sort of if, it, if the composition felt right and that's actually not the final cover layout so it's a bit different Cool. It actually works better. Okay. Do it. Yeah. I think the file's so large that it was taking like a minute to save. True. <clears throat> and I had so many layers. Well, not really. Yeah. It's really cool to be here watching the process. I think I've gone away from the computer. I'm like, I'm, like, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm happy now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going, going to make a do, tea. Do you ever... I can sleep peacefully. When I get happy... With something that I'm making, I start dancing. Oh yeah, okay. Like yeah, I, that's like how enthusiastic. I just get so excited. Oh, man, I'll, I'll get up and like I'll throw the ball around the house with the dog. Yeah, and, and you're yeah. just like, yes, yes, I did something good, yeah. yes. <laughs> I forgot music playing. I'll dance. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> Some little Nas something. Little Nas, little Nas X Panini. Yeah, Panini. Panini, it's on the on my dual screen. Is this a I'll dancing video? A dancing video. Um. I just thought I'd explain the mixer brush and how I use it. Uh, I use it um, to really soften edges, and this happens kind of later on, the later stages of the painting, um, and to to kind of give these flowy brush strokes. Uh, example is the hair, um, and some of the lost edges on the back of her head. So yeah, the mixer brushes. On this, it's the same button as the right uh, brush button. Uh, quick key is R. Press R. Um, and I use brush 125, my favorite brush. Uh, this one. And you can uh, bolt. I have it set to very wet, heavy mix. And if you alt click on an area on your painting, it'll kind of select a swab from there, as you can see up in this thumbnail. That's the kind of brush stroke that you're getting. And, yeah. Kind of like... Similar to having oil paints on your brush that isn't um, completely mixed. It, it creates these uh, nice, nice edges of color. Um, and here, for instance, down on the hill. I get these uh, nice strokes. Yeah. Uh, I explain this a little bit later to Victor as well. Um, in the next 10 minutes or so, I go through the mixer brush with him uh, in a more basic way. Key binding R and then, or under the, where the, the brush menu is, is where it is. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. Dude, I mean, this is a really. Firstly, this is so much fun. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> How old are you, by the way? Because I think people want to know. I'm 24 so, now. You're 24. I'm quite old. I'm 29. I'm almost 30. So. <laughs> it's and, not really old, but. <laughs> well, no, no, it's not not old, but I, I guess I started. I started quite late, so no, and don't like. I stress that I was. I started drawing late, and like, could I be good enough? But. I think the nice thing about art is you have so much time to get good. It's not exactly mm. like uh, playing tennis or boxing where you peak and you, you know you you early, late twenties, early thirties, and then you're almost out. By then. You no, some and some would argue that but, yeah, you can't really get good at yeah. art before you have enough life experience yeah. to really inject it with something point. valuable. Yeah, technique, <clears throat> technique, sure. There, there's definitely something to be said for mm -hmm. learning technique and the earlier you learn it, sure that's great. But the maybe the earlier you, you learn it, the earlier you sort of get over it. 
Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. But there does That's seem true. to be it's an fun. obsession. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's like logical. Mm-hmm. Looking at how fast-paced the world feels mm-hmm. nowadays. Yeah. Um, but there seems to be like a fear of like not blowing up before you're like 25. Yeah. And that being like so. that, like as if you're a failure. Yeah. And that's well, a I weird. Feel that sometimes. Well, that's a weird way of looking at the world mm-hmm. because to expect really amazing things mm-hmm. to happen to you without like decades of work mm-hmm. to me seems like realistically mm-hmm. you need to put prolonged time to mm-hmm. build enough like experience enough relationships enough yeah. kind of like to make enough mistakes mm-hmm. you know yeah mistakes that's something that I've been wanting to do make more of you know yeah like experiment with my process you need to put <clears throat> in a certain amount of time and have a certain amount of dedication yeah. to something before like the fruits mm-hmm. But when you see young people becoming super successful on the internet, and it's really cool and power to everybody who mm-hmm. does well, mm-hmm. and of course we're all seeking mm-hmm. our own like whatever definition of success, but it can give you like a false skewing of reality. Yeah. To think exactly. because you're surrounded by it, you're seeing it in your phone screen mm-hmm. when you wake up, when you go to sleep, or mm-hmm. that's particularly like the circles that you. Um, that you frequent on the internet mm. and that that's like a it's a it's a tiny representation of the population yeah exactly yeah, yeah. and it doesn't necessarily mean fulfillment yeah which I think is more you know more important obviously yeah so it's good to just understand that to, to, to realize and, and don't stress out about it right yeah yeah like by the same token, a little bit of a little, bit of, a little bit of pressure to do well, which is, is a good thing. Is, I think that's great. Yeah, it's a good thing to work hard, and I think yeah, it's, it's a good thing to be motivated. What to, to just don't don't kill yourself. <laughs> oh please don't. Yeah, fuck. Don't, don't like. Oh, I mean like don't work so hard. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you, you, you sit in front of the computer. You you need the balance as well. Oh, you like, need a life. You need a life. I mean, at the, the sweets, moment, the I sweets know that, right? Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, that, like my story now like at the moment I paint houses and I've been doing that for the last few months full time and then I come home and I work you know two to three hours I go to the gym in between mm. maybe an hour and a half two hours dude you're fit I go I climb a lot dude you're fit thanks you're like you too you're well, like, you started you're, climbing you're a lot long ago and you're just this you're climbing magician I think I think the, j- j- the jiu jitsu I think the yeah. jiu jitsu translated yeah 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 because I did jiu jitsu for a while yeah. And it's super similar, and the focus on grip strength yeah. is, it, I think it definitely yeah, translates. For sure. And yeah, the yeah, movements, the being in strange nice strange positions, yeah. upside down, yeah. it doesn't freak you out. Yeah, body awareness. Yeah. Body awareness, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I just mean like, yeah, uh, balance, um, and then, but also work hard, but don't, don't, uh, yeah, you need to have a life, because otherwise your, your work will probably suffer, because you'll be mentally having problems if you work too hard yeah um, but just now I've got a studio job so I get January December so I'm excited for that yeah and congrats man also, if you do if you do get that feeling of like that yeah it's too late or that you're not doing well like yeah dude you're killing it in my eyes thank you yeah, yeah. I so, think and I think definitely like as you say the balance and reality of life is like it's a day to day thing mm-hmm. and the fact that you have this set up and you have also another thing to like counteract mm-hmm. the sitting in front of the computer factor. Yeah, it's by going climbing and yeah. having a physical. I think it's in the digital age, you need something to keep your body. You know, we used to be hunter gatherers. Yeah. So we used to be constantly active. It's very bodies. unnatural sitting in front of a computer. Oh so. well, remember I was saying nothing's unnatural, right? So. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about. Well, that. who knows? It's definitely not super ideal. For your for your skeleton and your muscles yeah. and your mind and everything. Yeah, what I'm doing here. I don't know. I'm changing the colors, the flowers, trying to get them to um, see if they um, are more co- coherent to the painting in another. Or well, I don't know. It's just <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Nobody knows what they're doing. I think the red ones were softer. They're a little bit less. Uh, they draw a little bit less attention. Do you fiddle? Away from the face. Here's a question. So here I'm fiddle, I fiddle a lot in the paintings. Mm. Like I, I think that's kind of nice. Uh, it, to 
Yeah, I don't have a clear idea of how it's going to look. How do you know when to stop? That's a good question as well. Um, so, uh, something, I guess, from looking at a lot of arts, when it starts, areas start looking aesthetically pleasing, I'll kind of know that they look that way, and that might be something that that might be something that takes the time to, to kind of gain what kind of style you think looks nice, and mm -hmm. whether your edges here mm -hmm. are. Uh, should be hard or soft um, and I guess that was the idea of this process was to kind of go through edges and we wanted that painterly effect and using a mixer brush which is under the brush tool uh, if you click on it I have it set I think it's uh, set to key binding R uh, standard which is a default key binding for mixer brush and key binding I, is the same as a shortcut right yeah like a shortcut <clears throat> And I use my 125 brush usually with the mixer brush, which uh, again. That's the painterly one you're talking about. It's the very painterly one. It kind of gives these nice uh, brush strokey feel. Mm. Uh, and I set it to, I have the mixer brush set to, uh, what is it? It's, it's uh, what is it? Very wet setting? I'll have to look that up. The wetter, the blendier. Yeah, there's this, uh, very wet, heavy. What does it say? Heavy mix, yeah. Heavy mix. Okay. <clears throat> and it kind of blends the colors together. Standard, but eyes. I just draw them straight to the eyes. Okay, yeah. When I look at another person. Yeah. Um, I keep edges quite soft. Also, eyes... Uh, remember that the top eyelid casts a shadow as well? It gives it a nice... Um, over the pupil? Over the pupil, mm. exactly. So mm. you get... So it gives that structure to the eye. It's so very kind of, uh, you want to make sure that the eyeball looks round. Has so, form. So it has form. Something that I read in a book by Robert Henri, yeah. American painter, uh -huh. was he just has simple anecdotes in that book. Okay. And one of the things he just simply says is, you'll be surprised at how much closer the value and color mm -hmm. the pupil is to the skin than you realize. Mm-hmm. The, like the the value and the color of the people is like kind of often it's you know it's pink it's got a bit of skin color in it it's yeah. there's light reflecting from all around from the skin and yeah. it's it's never white no <laughs> ever exactly yeah. and uh and uh, yeah it's you I can you can kind of it's kind of also like the same value as the skin but a little bit colder it gives it that sort of I almost throw a little bit of gray into it. Mm. Just to cool it down, just a little bit from the skin tone. It's definitely, too it's definitely cooler, which yeah. will always give the impression yeah. of you know of a, of of a, a lighter wow, yeah. value and a wider yeah. yeah, yeah, and also the I mean classic cartooning thing mm -hmm. is like the the heavier the 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 shadow of the top eyelid means mm -hmm. the thicker the eyelashes yeah, and that's just like a visually and especially in portrait show it's just a feminine trait yeah. which just straight away just screams. Yeah, kind of like delicacy, mm -hmm. and and like the f the feminine, I don't know, eye. Yeah, having the yeah the thick eyelashes. Mm -hmm. Definitely, just yeah. that's what I, I think I added them in. They kind of blend into the shadow of the that's casting as well. Like you know, the the eye, eye the eyelash and the shadow and the eye kind of become one of the same value. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's which simple simple. Simplicity kind of gives it that painterly look, and then I, you know, I use those mixture brushes to soften those edges as well. Not have everything too hard. Right, harder draws your eye. Softer, sort of, is subordinate to harder, <clears throat> right? Yeah, I think um, exactly, definitely sharper edges attract the eye, um, but you need to have a blend in areas as well. So I like to soften edges, even in the focal area just to give the harder edges more of an effect as well. Sure. Because if everything's soft, and, uh, yeah, or if everything's hard, you kind of lose the, the contrast there. A balance of, yeah. of, uh, of factors. Yeah. Yeah. Composition. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I hope it's interesting to watch everything. I mean, uh, it's so, I have such a messy workflow, but, you know, I guess it kind of ended up okay in the end, so. Yeah. You kind of see that my don't don't be so fussy with how you manage your layers or I mean, do if you can if you want to spend your time to be better and have a better workflow and it's more efficient. It's probably a smart thing to do. It's probably a smart thing to do yeah. just for your sanity. Yeah.
but I mean, in reality, when you're trying to make a picture, sometimes yeah. it's just about making a picture. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe it's it's possible to consolidate later. Yeah. I try as hard as I can to be organized, but mm-hmm. I'm like you, man. It mm-hmm. just it just sort of happens. Yeah, I yeah. Sometimes I'm in. I got the music playing. I got some good music playing. I'm just like, oh, like boom, you late. Let's go. go. Yeah, come on. <laughs> this stroke needs to go here. Yeah, it's like. Uh, and you start something new and you're like, oh, I should have done something new later. But yeah, you're like, yeah. actually, whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever, just go. Yeah. Um, one thing that I wanted to ask now that came to my head was, do you have stories? Or like, does some kind of identity or feeling or story about a character develop mm-hmm. as you render this person more and more realistic? Like, do they come to life in any... Do you have imaginings of like who they are and how they would exist? Uh, not so much. Not with these portraits. Uh, I guess I. That can come. Someone can can kind of uh, have their own interpretation of that. But uh, I feel like someone, whether it kind of looks cool, is what, or like her style. She has a really interesting style, mm-hmm. like the way she has her hair and why she has the flowers in the hair why she chose that, uh, you know, matches her blouse, and I guess I find a pretty interesting fashion and shapes in fashion, and I think that's, and maybe the sort of her expression are the most important things, but then the story is kind of up to the viewer if they want to go that far. Sometimes I've done pieces that are exactly the same and they have a background that has a setting, like they're in I've done one piece that's uh, sort of like a rogue type character. Mm. She's got clouds in the background. Mm. She's got uh, leather armor, and there's much more story to that. Mm. Um, this is just maybe a modern girl, or yeah, other than that, just uh, mainly about her expression. But you know, we added these markings on her face, and that's something interesting it does have a yes yeah. that can give it more a new story. level of character she's got some sort of uh, i don't know someone said she kind of looks like a, some sort of princess or mm. yeah i mean the lace the lace and the flowers in the hair definitely yeah. uh, have a delicate kind of like princessy yeah. feel yeah but it's not like it's not obvious that she yeah. would be that yeah I think that that's... And then why are the markings as well? Does the princess have markings? Is she got yeah, some sort of... what's the deal? Is she in a cult? Is she, yeah. Is she, like... Yeah, does she, <laughs> is she, like, I don't know, in some sort of vegan meet-up group? Maybe. That paint their face? Yeah. <coughs> I think that it's... It, it's cool. Whether there's whether you think of a story or not, people develop stories, so I think it's cool that you focus on the visual and that's the role you play in yeah. the in the audience's mm-hmm. kind of mm-hmm. I don't know like appreciation yeah yeah but I think it's like a m- miraculous and you've seen how um, I draw different to this which mm-hmm. is more like cartoony yeah. but it's incredible how essentially the same thing it's just a bunch of marks on a page yeah and it can attain this new magical quality yeah. that you can then like start to bring to life with the mm-hmm. story. And you do a lot. I've seen a lot of storyboarding, your storyboarding work, and that like those they're, they're so simplified, but there's so much story to them, which is so interesting that you can because you, they're in a setting and there's a certain uh, camera angle that can can express that so much more. You know what I mean in a very simple way. Yeah, and what they're the building blocks, and then if yeah. you, I mean, imagine seeing something like like. A whole storyboard rendered in the way that you paint. Yeah, it's incredible. Have so much, yeah, be, yeah. We should make that. Yeah, really <laughs> we should make a comic yeah, book yeah, or yeah. something. It would be so cool. Yeah. But oh. yeah, I guess a lot of. Uh, I, yeah, so making. I'm talking about making mistakes and trying to do a lot more 3D these days and uh, I've been experimenting with 3D code and Blender because there's. I think um, environments are really interesting and story is, is interesting. Um, straying away from these portraits and giving something uh, just focusing on different aspects of storytelling um, and using 3D has been really interesting but uh, it's also quite, difficult yeah, and it's, it's a cool. struggle and there's a lot of failing at the moment but I'm starting to get a hang of 3D code just it, recommend if you yeah. get bored of something try maybe try different software I mean Blender's free 3D code's not very expensive um, it's cool to see you yeah. doing that because I've been like threatening 
yeah. to get into 3D. Yeah. But I've been pretty, um, what's the word, like <clears throat> indoctrinated. But you do storyboarding and you do like your, you do, I've seen your portrait works and you do like rendered pieces and you do traditional work. I guess I do a lot of just digital portraits. That's what I'm that's saying. I'm, I'm, so I'm talking to, digital because like okay. all that stuff, it's cool, <laughs> but on the digital front, yeah. um, definitely I'm inspired by people who can move across and just like are open to new softwares and mm-hmm. don't they don't they're like whatever anyway back to photoshop Let's see what's happening so, now so yeah i've started i uh, started detailing flowers a lot and i am referencing off many different references okay uh, and a lot of it is just uh i guess I'm, for the reference i'm taking away what the values are like on a white laced top mm-hmm. uh, but otherwise i'm kind of designing the shapes myself it's so cool just so i don't flowers think, yeah okay Things that look like flowers, not so detailed. Yeah, no, just contouring just the body. Just contouring the, the shape of the flower, not getting too... And then the other shapes are kind of... they kind of... Those rendered shapes hint that the other shapes are also floral, but mm. not trying to paint everything out, just so you kind of hint it. I think that's... Well, nice you can see about. here, you can start to be like, oh, okay, like the... the, the um, where the light <coughs> hits, yeah. the illusion is really... <coughs> strong and then as it goes away you're like oh just just hinting at yeah it. yeah and that also lets i rest uh you don't have detail everywhere yeah we we do the work yeah it's kind of the yeah the illusion yeah right? and that's another way of uh sort of hinting the painterly effect of, of things usually this painterly feel comes comes towards the end when i've actually rendered out everything and then i decide everything looks quite correct mm. that's lose some of the edges in places yeah for instance you see her on the recording of the screen this is still sharp this is still sharp here. yeah and you've really and gone in soft. gone in with the soft brush yeah, i've gone in with a soft brush and mixer brush and i've just kind of blended out the edges wow it's a really cool it's a really cool i would love to see you do yeah more figure drawings yeah with the whole body yeah, that's I find really tough, but uh, it's yeah, tough. It's super tough. It's so hard. It's hands like and, feet yeah, and, hands and feet. It's so um, hard. I, gu- I guess I hid the hands in this one. That's a good. <laughs> yeah, tip. yeah, yeah. Forget you know, about that. Don't have to worry about the hands being around the face. No, I love. Bit. I love when I see um, the hands and body. I'd love to see that from you. Yeah, because it seems like you've really nailed the portraits. I mean, <clears> I mean, <throat> evidently, and. Um, yeah, I mean, you're challenging yourself with 3D cut, but I would challenge you to get yeah, the hands are just, stuff. just as tough as getting the face right, even tougher sometimes. I find it's it, hard I find it so I think it's hard. harder. Yeah, they're such strange little shapes with all their little... Yeah, and little... you know when they're wrong, because we read hands very well, like our eyes are very, uh, they, they understand hands, mm. but it's hard to draw. The Same... ha- yeah, the hands communicate as much <coughs> as the face. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, some post Malone. Oh, boom, oh, Hollywood's bleed. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I don't, I don't, not my cup of tea. Not, <laughs> not my cup of tea. Okay. I've been listening to jazz. Jazz, okay. Really good. <clears throat> I guess in these last stages, I'm very comfortable now. This is what the paint is going to look like. I did change the hair. Um, as you can see now, it uh, has a nice flow from the left hand side of the head around behind her neck and down past the shoulder and back up to the face. I think I'm just spending sort of that last, I'm not, I gotta go to bed soon, but I've got like 30 more minutes and I'm like, I may as well just sit and uh, just touch up areas, Mm. see if they look better. New layer every time? Yeah, I make new layers a lot. Now I've got heaps of layers, you can see. Yeah, that. look at it. There's like, oh, great. Oh, cool. You're going through the layers. <clears throat> there you go. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know what I'm doing. Ah, okay. Whoa. So now I've decided the, sh- this, the sleeve the sleeve doesn't have a nice shape to it. It doesn't explain the form of the arm. Um, I kind of wanted to open it up so it looks like her arm's kind of coming out towards you. Okay, yeah, 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 totally. It might be an exaggeration of the sleeve, but... Sure, but sometimes exaggeration is what you need. Yeah. 
just so it kind of looks like it flares out a little yeah. bit at the end, yeah. rather than it sticking on it on like yeah. a tight sleeve. It's um, dynamic. Yeah, it's a bit more dynamic. Dynamic. But then again, also dynamic. thinking, not trying to take too much attention away from the face, because it is quite low. It's, it's the balance, baby. It's, it's the balance, balance of factors. Yeah. And there's no formula. Well, I guess that maybe there is, but not really. Experimentation. We're at the pointy end. Yeah, we're there. Oh, thanks for. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, we're still going. I just put up an image at the. Wait, here's the final, and it's not actually the final. I'm gonna make a few tweaks tonight on the flowers, but it won't change. It, it, other than the flowers being a little bit more detailed, I think that's the piece. Um, yeah. Beautiful. Um, well thanks. done. I thought it'd be more interesting because Victor's here. It'd be more interesting than just listening to me mumble on. But I started recording, and it just got. After the first 10 minutes, it was like, I don't know what to say. So you would, uh, I don't know, maybe you it's want to good. us. Well, you, well, it's good to bounce off somebody else, right? And you hadn't seen the video before, so it's it quite interesting to, to hear what you were thinking, um, uh, viewing it as a with a fresh eye and what you wanted to ask. Maybe there's a lot of the, a lot of you viewers will want to ask the same questions. Hopefully we answered some of them. Yeah, as, as a, one of your fans. Yeah. Of many people I'm sure that are wondering how you do work. Yeah. It's yeah, it's it's cool. It's hard yeah. thing. And uh, also yeah. depressing. No, no, no. <laughs> That's a joke. It's inspiring, man. Yeah. It's it's okay. sick. Thanks. Yeah. But um yeah, just look into the adjustment layers and hopefully they were explained as well as colour overlays. I mean layer o o uh, layer, layer, layer modes. Layer modes. Layer modes. Layer yeah. modes. Other than the mixer brush, the normal brush, the eraser. Flipping your canvas. Flipping canvas. That was um, a cool one. Yeah. And uh, layer modes. Spending time on the early construction so that adjustment layers. Yeah. Well, spending time on the early proportions. Yeah, that's I recommend that. Get your sketch right, and then uh, you at least will have a good sketch. You can always come back to. Mm. And stuff. Yeah. And that's just years of work. Yeah, it just takes. <laughs> so, good luck. Thanks to Imagine FX for having me. It's been really fun. Thanks for watching. Cheers.